just the short this is me and uh, you cannot reach me on twitter anymore i've moved on to uh, greener pastures um the one we have to have a look today is uh, in PMP Modern Search, you have uh, the various components, and most people are familiar how you can connect the various um, web parts together. But one thing that we uh, see is not used that much is the ability to connect a result web part to another result web part. So that's sort of like, yeah, why would I ever do that? Uh, if you are familiar with some database uh, um, theory as well, you can think of it as a sort of like a master details view. Uh, another way to do, if you have some data that is related to another set of data, you can actually make it work together uh, by using these uh, connections. Uh, the one I was going to show you today is uh, where I used it to create a filter, even though we have a filter web part, but in this case, it will actually make sense and uh, the requirements that we got is that we want to create this A to C filter uh, or alphabetic filter. Uh, we want to do it in modern search and um, it should be dynamic, so, which means that if I have some topic uh, and the first letter of that topic um, is there, then we should see that letter and I'll, it will make clear sense just shortly. Um, if we have the same letter as, uh, pressed twice, we want to remove that. We only want to see it once. And uh, once we have that up and running, then we want to connect it to another web part and make it work like a filter. So what we have uh, when we start this uh, is uh, something like this, where we have um, just an ordinary search uh, scenario where we have a result web part, we have a filter, and we have a search box up here. What we want to see is like this, where we have a sort of like a filter up here, the letters match the various f uh, topics we have down here and only once, even though in this case we have mobile phones and maternity to leave. Well, that's two instances, but we only see it once up here and it works like a filter and it doesn't disappear like we see over here with our ordinary uh, refiner or filter. If I select something here, the rest of them goes away. We don't want that. We want this to stay up there all the time. Um, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, the topics over here, they are just uh, pages in a page library somewhere. Uh, in this case, they are uh, in this uh, site pages library, um, but they can be anywhere because I'm kind of old school. I don't really rely any uh, on uh, on uh, list columns. All what I do is based on uh, content types and site columns. So in this case, I've created a policy content type. And in order to make sure that it works all over the place, uh, I have uh, added it up in the content type gallery. So here we have my policy uh, content type. And of course it contains various uh, site columns up here. And one of them, just to be lazy, um, I decided to cheat. So rather than having to do something funky about uh, how I can extract the first letter of uh, the topic, uh, I just uh, cheated and created a uh, filter, uh, sorry, a, a calculated column up here that just grabs the first letter of the topic or the title from that page. And of course, this content type, I distribute to the various sites where I want to use it. So it's all there uh, out of the box. Makes it a lot easier for me. So when I'm back here again, I have to add that filter in some way. And the easiest way to do that is just to add a new result web part. And I've of course been cheating. So, uh, most of the configuration is already set up. So I have to use the same content type as I use down here because I want to see the content down there and I only want to see it once. So let's see if we just remove that thing there. Now I get uh, my results up here. The reason why I do that is that I have added that uh, field that we saw that was called First letter from title, very descriptive title in this case. So I've added that as a as a as a selected property, which means it is available up here. So now I can actually see it if I want to. Um, another way, another thing I have to do is I have to make sure that um, I use a custom uh, layout because this is not the way it used. It it, it normally looks. If I have a look at this up here, it's, it's a very, very, very basic template. The only thing it's doing is that it shows um, the first letter 
and only uh, some of it actually because it's just contains some more but if i look at the what it will look like if i just used cart for instance it will uh, not it'll just be the same as we saw before so i'm just cheating so let's replace this what i got over here so that's just a custom uh, display template it's actually available in the in the samples repository it's very basic um, another thing we have to make sure that we can actually select it. That's just checking on this uh, feature. Then it will uh, uh, make sure that we can actually select this uh, item, the various items. The last thing we have to ensure is over here. Um, if I remove that, you'll see that, of course, it's going through all of the content we have down here, and it will add the first letter from each of the items down there. And that works fine, except for in one case, because we have two of them. We have maternity leave and we have mobile phones. Both of them are up here, and they both represented by the letter M. But we only want to see it once, even though that it exists uh, twice. And that's where we have this, cap uh, this uh, property, which is called collapse specification. It's seldomly used. I have not seen anybody else use it uh, in their templates uh, yet, but I won't promote that. What it does is that it actually collapses the result sources. So as a result, we get back from the API. So you say, I want to see this um, property and I want to see it this many times. In this, in this case, I just want to see it once. So just by applying that, it goes away up here. And now we are back at just showing the letters that we want up here, and we only see them once. So that's the first part of my uh, uh, requirements uh, list. And the next thing is that I want to use it as a sort of a filter. By doing that, I have to go to the other uh, web part, to my main web part here, and I have to uh, use um, the capabilities we have here where we can actually connect it. As you see up here, I've already connected this web part to the search box. I've connected to the filter, but I'm also connecting it to the other web the results web part, this one up here. Um, in this case, I'm telling it, you should use this one up here as a filter. The field from up here you want to use is first letter from title on which property in this web part do you want to, to uh, compare it to? Again, first letter from uh, title because it's in both of them. And I'm using it as a token down here, which we are included in the guide, guide text down here. We can actually see the syntax that I'm going to use. So I've just grabbed that, my clipboard, and I go back to page one. You see that the, uh, the, I'm just looking for something that is a document. I'm using the same document type ID as, as previously, but now I've added this uh, clause up here saying, so remove that. What I wanted to do is that the first letter from title must be contained in what I get in my filter. My filter is what I get up from here. So it sort of like works like a, a, as, a, as a sort of like a filter again. Um, so if I run that, then it will actually show this uh, functionality where I take a look up here and then I can just filter it away. This is just, of course, a nice little feature, but it's something that we haven't seen uh, been used yet uh, for a lot of people. And it, we can use that for uh, a lot of, in, in a lot of cases, we can use it for like, in this case, it's just uh, HR policies, but we can use it for documents. We can use it for list items. And we don't have to use it just as a filter. We can also use it, as I said before, uh, where we have, for instance, um, I'm ha I have a search page where I'm looking for document sets. And when I click on a document sets on a related or, or connected uh, results web part, I see the content in that uh, document set. There's no need to 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 actually uh, split that, and you have to go into the to the document set or in another case where we have we're looking for list items. If I click on a list item in the search result, I see in another search result, uh, pay, uh, sorry, in a search results web part, I see the files that is actually attached to that list item. So it's a very versatile uh, web part that we can use for uh, a lot of uh, funny stuff. 
So this was just a sort of like a teaser. I have recorded all of this um, and it's available on YouTube as well. So we can walk through how it actually is uh, created um, all the way. And um, so that's just an appetizer. And I hope uh, we'll uh, have fun with the PMP Modern Search. And of course, always sign up for um, the repository and uh, let's see your uh, questions and answers, answers and requests. And we also have PMP Modern Search uh, office hours every two weeks, where we can uh, where you can arrange for, for a chat for a half an hour with uh, with me or one of the other guys from the from the project. That's it. Mm-hmm.